three, two, one. Boosters in ignition. These guys here just traveled two million kilometers and they came back. And that's just the beginning. When NASA's Artemis I lifted off from the launch pad in November, there was no crew, but there were passengers, a colony of thousands, yeast cells, carefully prepared at the University of British Columbia by a scientist who was just a child when the last astronaut set foot on the moon. If there was one word, it would, say, it would be proud. Proud like a parent. Nislo's lab-borne progeny are the same kind you might find in a jar at home, with one important difference. He created 6,000 genetically unique versions to test how they responded to cosmic radiation that bombarded the spacecraft. Cosmic radiation wreaks havoc on human DNA, causing everything from cataracts to cancer. Most yeast genes function just like ours. This is pure motivation. It really is. There is perhaps no obstacle to long duration human spaceflight more formidable than cosmic radiation. And it could be that one of the oldest life forms on the planet helps the most sophisticated move beyond it. It's an amazing time in history. Chris Hatfield spent nearly six months aboard the International Space Station, the longest of any Canadian astronaut. But in low Earth orbit, Hadfield was largely shielded from cosmic radiation by the Earth's magnetic field. Future destinations, the Moon and Mars, are outside that protective cloak. Hadfield says Nislo's work is vital. And from that, then we can start to understand what does cause the cancers? What, what types of radiation are we most susceptible to? Nislo thinks the answer may be an mRNA shot, working like a COVID-19 vaccine that will activate a radiation-fighting protein in astronauts. There are months of analysis ahead to find a path to the stars in something from a pantry. Kurt Petrovich, CBC News, Vancouver.